There we go. So um, those are some of the features that the Harmony Pro carries, opposed to, for instance, a, a Elite that you see in the store. So you can see um, the remote is a, basically a reskinned Elite, but it does come with the Precision IR Blaster, two-year warranty, um, and of course we have this um, priority support line. And again, what I want to mention uh, is that we are working on dealer-specific features for that product that really, you know, help you, um, you know, get the most out of your uh, setup so you can provide, you know, uh, different ways of controlling these devices, such as, you know, dealing with multi-zone um, and so forth. So that's the Harmony Pro. I want to just quickly go back to this the screen to really explain the differences. So if you look at the other hubs, um, the companion and the standalone hub support eight devices. The Harmony Pro and Harmony Elite support 15. Now these are of course AV devices, so we're not talking about um, home control devices. So if I have a bunch of Z-Wave or Zigbee bulbs or Lutron lighting, we don't count those as additional devices. So the home control devices are not counted towards that. So the other great benefit that you have with the Harmony product line is Yes, of course, we are um, also in the retail channel, but there, the benefit to that is we um, also, of course, need to make the product very easy to use for our customers, and that's, that's a very big strong point, of course. When you set this product up, and I'm going to go more in detail, we have some great options that, you know, if a, if a child starts turning devices on or off or the power goes out, there's a very easy way to kind of synchronize that state with a help button. So that's a very strong point that we, of course, provide. Um, and those are some of the benefits that this product is also um, available on, you know, different models in a retail channel because that really uh, makes uh, us make sure that everyone can really use the product, right? That being said, just because the product is easy to use and it's also very easy to set up doesn't mean that it doesn't have uh, advanced features. Actually, the Harmony has a lot of advanced features, which I'm going to discuss later. Um, now, some of you may not be aware that we have them. I've heard that it's sometimes hard to find, but again, we have a great site where I'm going to show you how you can find these um, advanced features that will help you in your programming. So the great thing when uh, we talk about programming is that the Harmony can be configured on your desktop, on your tablet, or on your iPhone. Um, again, when we're talking about um, tablets or smartphones, it can be iOS, Android, um, you can set it up on Windows or Mac. Um, another benefit, of course, is um, say uh, you need a small change to your customer's configuration. The desktop software, when it comes to modifying the account, can be um, accessed uh, remotely. So um, you can uh, program a couple of changes. Maybe the customer needs an additional favorite channel um, or maybe um, another device is introduced, you can actually do that remotely without having to make that house call. That being said, all the programming can be done on the phone as well, and the tablet, but for security reasons, we wanna make sure that you are within the same network when you're programming this. Now, that being said, you can the customer can definitely control their equipment on their phone, um, cloud-based, anywhere in the world, because the controlling aspect is, of course, different than the programming. When we're talking about programming, of course, we're dealing with customers' thermostats and lights, and of course, these things um, require you know, security. So the, there's a reason why, um, at this point, we've chosen to make these home control programming uh, features. Right now, they're available on doing that on the app. So you can build your whole configuration on your desktop, but when you start customizing a thermostat, or a blind, um, what we want to do is make sure you use the mobile app um, for that um, when it authenticates. So again, this is a very easy way of controlling it because you can bring your phone quickly to the blinds, make sure you have the right settings, the same thing with the lights. It gives you that flexibility in the house to really program it uh, to your customer's needs. So just as the app you know, is easy to set up, um, the control part of it is also very easy. Now when I say easy, it's, it's easy for the customer because it's not intimidating. You can see the activities right on the screen. There's a very easy way of controlling your lights, your blinds. I'm gonna give a demo on that a little bit later. Um, again, when we look at lights, 
it's irrelevant to us if it's a group that combines different systems. So you can have a household with lights from Lutron and some Z-Wave and Zigbee lights. Um, you can create groups that have a combination of Lutron and Z-Wave or Zigbee. Um, we support all of these. They can all be programmed in an activity or operated independently. But as you can see, it's a very um, user-friendly way on the app for the customer to kind of interface with their home control. You know, we've had very several testimonies from installers and customers where they've, they've mentioned that it's actually easier to control their home control with our app than the manufacturer's app. So this is something that we, uh, we really strive for to really simplify that experience so the customer doesn't have to call you out to turn on their, their lighting system and so forth. Yeah, Insteon. So there's a question actually well, that's going to come up very soon. Insteon, um, we communicate with that bridge. Um, this is a great example or where we want to look and make sure that we can work with other APIs. And Insteon is definitely part um, of that. So any uh, Harmony Hub-based product um, can talk to a Insteon bridge. Um, if you go to support.myharmony.com, it shows the Insteon bridges that we support. Um, it's, of course, the newer generations of Insteon that support their cloud-based API. Um, so we'll touch back on that for sure. So um, what I also want to mention is that our setup is very simplified because it's simplified and it's fast because we want to make sure that you spend more time on creating these activities, right? Let us do you know, the grunt work and you actually focus on creating these experiences like good morning activities or an activity that will automatically maybe perhaps launch Amazon on a Roku. So those are great things you can do for your customer. And while you focus on that, you don't have to create all these scripts. And that's something I want to mention too um, in a while. I want to actually explain to you really the strengths of Harmony. But this is a great example where what we're trying to do here is really speed up the setup process. And how do we do that? Well, if these devices are connected to your network, we automatically discovered many of these devices. Now, some of these devices we may not yet control through IP. It might be on our, our roadmap, but definitely some of them are. So DISH, of course, we control through IP, the Lutron, the Roku, um, but we also detect devices that maybe do not support IP control, like a Microsoft Xbox. So we control that through IR, but we still detect it through the network so you don't have to enter these model numbers. Saves you a ton of time. It's the same thing with smart TV, Sony, LG, Panasonic. We all discover them through the network. Another great feature, so some of you may know that in the past, we had um, a dealer page for our legacy software. You could clone accounts. Now, I know we do not have this yet on our new software. Um, this is something on our roadmap. Again, we have to carefully prioritize things. Um, right now, we're looking at multi-zone, and we're also starting to look at um, the new dealer page. And this is a great opportunity where uh, we may be reaching out for some feedback when we have some early versions um, of you know, the uh, experience and how to um, access that. But I think it's important for everyone to know for the time being, one of the important features is of course cloning. Now we don't have that feature right now, but we have a feature that's very close to kind of creating a clone. Because a lot of times I hear that an installer wants to simply make a copy from a basic account. They may have a specific AV stack where they sell this specific Integra AVR Excuse me, I just need to meet someone. There we go. So we have an example where the um, installer, you may have a specific Integra AVR, a Sony TV, um, and with a DISH DVR. So you have this, this AV stack that you always use for your configuration. So, or maybe you not, don't use it all the time, but it's something you run a special and you, know, you frequently install this, this AV stack. So what you can do is you can create a master account. So maybe call it Bob's AV number one, or you know, just for example. Now that account you can actually import. So you can create a new account for your customer, and you can say, well, I want to you know, import another Harmony account, which is Bob's AV number one, right, for instance. Now, when you put in those account credentials, including the password, you have a very easy way of automatically importing that configuration. So it already adds the devices and the activities. 
The only thing that you would have to do is um, reintroduce perhaps um, maybe the lighting system. You might have to repair the Lutron bridge, um, but the AV stack is already imported, so that saves you a lot of time. Um, closed cabinet, um, again, this is really, in my opinion, a must. It really helps. And of course, this is um, another reason why the Harmony Pro is really the CDA product. Um, you know, we carry remotes to like a 650 and so forth. Um, again, those remotes would have to be aimed at the devices. Some devices may have a longer delay. You know, think of projectors and other devices. It becomes just a tough experience for the customer. Um, but as you can see, this is the retail mini blaster. Um, that I deliberately put in this image really with the IR precision kit You have a much better way of kind of uh, placing this underneath the TV um, or on the AM other AV components So um, I just want to also you know mention um, the Amount of AV devices we support we support more than 5,000 manufacturers but of course I'm not gonna like build a slide deck with 5,000 manufacturers. I just want to quickly emphasize, you know, how big our database is. And it's really not how many devices we have in our database. I've seen some competitors claim they have more. It's not about the amount, really. What I want to talk about is why our database is different. Why have we been approached by some really big players? And I'm talking, you know, um, software companies, uh, hardware companies that would love to have our database because our database is a bit different and we will never share this because this is, you know, our customer's database as well. Now, what that means is we don't just store devices that have a bunch of IR codes. No, what we do is actually we write complete device features, right? When we store a Samsung TV, and if it's a 2012 Samsung TV, we know that it's a, one of the first generation smart TVs and they need 12 seconds to warm up. So the Harmony knows, and you don't need to write some kind of crazy script. Now the Harmony knows, hey, I need to wait 12 seconds before I can switch to another source from an off state. Now the Harmony also understands that, that when I switch from TV to Blu-ray, if the TV is already on, it's not gonna apply those 12 seconds. Now our database also understands and this is something I work on myself and with a team of 20 other um, database um, um, designers is that they actually only work on our database five days a week because we have more than 8 million customers. We have um, all these devices in our database and when these devices get modified by customers, we modify those. We look at them, we question them. If someone has learned additional commands or modified them, we verify that towards the manual, we go back to the store. I actually myself do actually in-store testing and make sure that a lot of these components that are getting released are actually accurately in our database. You know, Samsung right now, of course, is much faster. It takes five seconds for a Samsung TV to warm up. You know, a Sharp takes a lot longer. So we have all this data and we make sure we program that data so you don't have to spend time hard coding all kinds of delays. And that's something where we feel is a huge strength of harmony. So it's not just IR codes, it's understanding these components, how they switch, how they work. So that's all stored in each device. And that really allows you to really focus on simply creating activities where you add your devices, set your inputs, and you're ready to go. And then you can spend time customizing these activities with perhaps lighting um, and other things um, for your customer. So this is something I wanna you know, keep in mind, this is really the strength of Harmony. It has a smart database. It's not the amount, it's really it has intelligence to save you time uh, with programming. So these are just AV devices, some examples. Now we're talking about smart home control of course as well. So all our hub based products, so I just wanna clarify, any Harmony hub can control these devices right out of the box. So we're compatible with U, LifeX, Lutron, and so forth, Nest, Honeywell, Echobee. So that's, that's a quite a large list that we support right from the get-go. And yes, we also work with SmartThings and Insteon. So once we have authenticated with them, we um, have control of these endpoints. And even the other way around, SmartThings can actually also point to our API. So the cool thing is we have an API that we also share with other companies 
So they can actually control it from their app or from their system. So that's a great way of you know, really giving um, everyone you know, the most out of their products because they may have different ways of wanting to control their AV stack. Now, if you want, of course, more control, we have this great accessory, which is the Harmony Home Hub Extender. And that really allows you to now control Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. So just the name, you know, a few, um, you can control, you know, a lot more lighting systems such as, you know, GE, Osram, Cree, Linear, Leviton, and so forth. Um, locks from Schlage, uh, Yale, Quickset. Um, the list goes on and you can do some great things, you know, with these. It's, it's not just, you know, I have, you know, a sensor here. You can set a sensor to, of course, you know, um, turn on a light. I do that myself. If I, you know, a walk-in closet, you know, it's great for a customer. They open it up, it turns on the light, they close the door, turn, you know, it shuts it off or you can use a motion sensor. But you can also say, well, maybe your customer, you know, is a big movie van and he's got a huge... A drawer of Blu-ray players, a Blu-ray disc for his Blu-ray player. So you can actually add a motion sensor or a door sensor. You can put a door sensor right in his cabinet. So now when he opens his Blu-ray collection to show off, it automatically also turns on the TV, launches the Blu-ray player, turns on the AVR, and sets it to the right source and ejects the Blu-ray player. And that's something you can actually do in a matter of minutes with Harmony. It doesn't take any programming skills. It's basically saying, I open this sensor and enable my watch Blu-ray activity. So those are some great examples where you can really integrate your home control with your AV stack with a matter of minutes with Harmony. Now API, we talked about it briefly. Um, some examples, Misfit, Pebble is hopefully on its way. Uh, Misfit is a great example. Not everyone is familiar with it. It's just a um, wearable fitness um, device that also is a button. Now that button could actually trigger um, different actions, including um, Harmony activity. So our API is shared with them. So when someone may decide to go running for your customer, you can set that up, they leave the house, they can actually start a Harmony activity to lower the blinds, turn off the lights, turn off the TV, or maybe when they come home, they double press it and their workout music is starting to play on their Sonos and the lights are on, etc. And it sets the AC nice and low. So those are some great examples where our API can really enhance the experience. Um, there's apps like Yonomi and Ift where you can actually now do geofencing. So as soon as you approach your home, it will enable an activity. Maybe you welcome home when it starts opening the blinds, turns on the lights, maybe sets the TV to ESPN. So you can do a lot of great features with that. Um, there's also a button available. The one thing I haven't mentioned here, I'm going to actually leave that for my demo, is a beta version of an API that um, eventually will have another version of a release. Um, and that's very exciting because um, Sony Android TVs have now access to a Harmony app. So it's a great way that customers from their smart TV can actually control the Harmony. So that's something I'm actually going to demo. But well, before we get to that, um, I want to mention, you know, some of the key benefits that the Harmony Pro, of course, provides for your customer. So with the LCD screen, you, of course, have best of both worlds. So you have the ability to not have, of course, the physical buttons, which are really important, because really when you're controlling a device when it comes to volume, you know, changing um, the song or may it be the chapter, it's a lot easier, of course, doing that on a physical remote than being glued to your, you know, your phone. Now, of course, you know, having that LCD screen really gives you that extra benefit of having these features right there and then. So you can actually see the status of your Nest Protect, your locks, your thermostat, your blinds, and you can have that in-depth control. So in this example, you can see how I can actually have, see the status of my lights. So I can actually dim individual lights, or I can dim a specific group, or I can actually simply turn them on and off. The other great benefit is that I can um, adjust my thermostat. So I can change the thermostat, I can see the status, um, if I have blinds, I can uh, control these blinds individually or control them as a group. 
And the same thing for my locks. I can actually see the status on my lock. I can lock them. I can change the lock um, to locked or unlocked. Um, so those are great features. If I have a Nest Protect, I can actually see um, the status of the Protect. And again, the Protect you can incorporate into activities too because it also has a presence sensor. Now another great feature is favorite channels. Again, um, these options are available on the other hubs, but now I have to grab my phone, unlock my phone, start the app, maybe my phone is charging, maybe it's in another room. Again, I'm gonna show you some benefits that the Harmony app is a great way of controlling your devices, but maybe not when I'm in my living room. It's good for different scenarios. Um, so we'll get back to that. I think it's important to know the app is a great um, add-on for the Harmony, but it's not a permanent replacement of the remote. The remote still has a very powerful role in the living room. So the great thing of the Elite, of course, because this remote, unlike the Companion, has the LCD screen, you actually have that access to your 50 favorite channels. So when you're watching TV, you can easily access your favorite channels. But the Elite and the Harmony Pro, of course, has, have also something else up their sleeve. So that actually really gets you that one-time um, instant access to ESPN. So maybe I'm late for the game, I storm into my house, I wanna see the game, I'm already 10 minutes late, I missed the first goal. I can actually grab the Harmony Pro remote and instantly just press the ESPN button and the Harmony will automatically trigger the watch TV, turn on the cable box, turn on the AVR, and then set it to the appropriate channel so I can actually, with a push of a button, watch my ESPN. So those favorite channels are not just available for TV. We also have favorite channels for Sonos, up to 50 Sonos favorites that you can, of course, while you're listening to Sonos, you can switch to a radio station that is a favorite, a Spotify channel and so forth. Um, and of course, we also have these available for Roku, up to 50 uh, stations as well. So all your apps, um, are available right there and you can take that another step. Maybe your customer, you know, um, doesn't have a cable box, but they have Sling TV. So with Roku, you can actually create a Sling TV activity. So we'll automatically not just launch the Roku, we'll actually launch the Sling TV app. Another great feature, and again, a lot of these things I'm gonna um, really show in a short demo, I think that will help a lot, seeing is really believing, is we have a sleep timer. And what's great about that, is you can trigger that for any activity. So you can trigger that for watch TV or watch a movie, or if you really wanna give the customer the most uh, out of their AV equipment, you can actually set a good night routine. So that's something I'll be demoing as well. You can see here, I can easily switch it from 50 minutes or set it for 120 minutes if I wanna you know, have the sleep timer um, activate after the movie. Now this is also a great feature which I'll be demoing and that's the home control buttons that are available uh, right on the Harmony Pro. So what you can do is you can very simplify this experience and now with a push of a button it can turn on all your lights or turn on a specific group or maybe a specific reading lamp. Um, and it's not just lights, it can turn on plugs, it can control blinds and these are completely customizable. So you can see here, I can add a light group, I can add a fan, um, so it's a great way for now, having everyone in the household um, control things with a push of a button. It's like a light switch. And it's not just people that live in a household. Now, grandma can turn on the smart bulbs. Um, the clean, you know, whoever cleans the house can actually turn on the lighting. Uh, maybe someone is babysitting. It gives you that instant simplified access to turning on your home control devices. So we'll be demoing that as well. So the other great technology, of course, that the Harmony Hubs um, have is Bluetooth. And Bluetooth, you know, is a great tribute when, you know, we're talking about devices such as certain game consoles like PS4, Nintendo Wii, um, Amazon Fire, we also use through Bluetooth. Um, and, you know, there's a, um, a growing number of um, PCs that are now really built on a little HDMI stick. And these devices are really only Bluetooth, with the exception of maybe Amazon. But again, doing that through IP um, right now um, requires a lot of effort with drivers. So until that's simplified, we're going to stick with Bluetooth there. 
So Wi-Fi, um, same thing, IP control. So I mentioned DISH, but of course Sonos we're using through IP, Roku we're using through IP, and this is something you know we want to further expand and you know would like to hear from you as well uh, in our surveys what what you think you know should be some of the top priorities. So again, I uh, wanted to briefly touch on this. Um, I know uh, the clock is ticking, but I think this is really important. Um, support.myharmony.com, I suggest to bookmark this. This could really help you learn a lot of these advanced features, right, that we're talking about. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna show an example here. Um, just bear with me. So I heard a question here the other day um, on a sales call. Yeah, let's do a live question. question about changing the default button assignment. Yeah, okay. So why don't we put this to the test? It was actually in TiVo. Oh, on TiVo, we don't have a specific TiVo article, but it applies to everything. So I just type in button assignment. I can also type in button. Again, this is using a Google engine, so even if I make typos, it will find. So right here, customizing remote buttons. And it's not just customizing buttons. Maybe it's a hub-based product. Maybe it's IR. So it's a hub-based product. Well, are you want to do it with the mobile app or the desktop so software? So let's try the mobile app. So again, it shows you step-by-step -step how to get there, right? So we hit the menu. We go to the setup, we click add devices and activities, remote and hub. We select that we want to control, customize these buttons. So we want to customize activity buttons for a specific activity. And now I can change those buttons. And I can do the same thing for home control buttons. So this is just one example of where the support side really breaks it down. Um, so we talked about also you know, um, the desktop software. So if I click here, um, this is for the mobile app. There is also the desktop software where, again, you know, we make sure that these articles have screenshots, step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, we have someone that works full-time on these articles, um, and I also contribute with some technical documentation. That's just a great example, right? Um, another example is we are trying to perfect multi-zone, but right now it's still... Um, a little uh, tricky to set up until we really nail down that experience. I actually created a multi-zone activity, um, sorry, an article on how to set up multi-zone devices and kind of giving you all the tips. So I really encourage to use this. I wanna give one more example. I heard that you know um, there was an installer that assumed that you can't leave devices on. Well, definitely something in the power feature. And not just that, we have another great power feature that some of you are not aware of. And that's the fact that you can actually not just leave devices on, but this is a great feature for gamers or other devices that may need to be on between activities. You can actually say, I wanna leave my Xbox on between activities. But when I hit off, I wanna shut down. So maybe you're playing a game, you wanna quickly uh, watch some TV and then go back to your game, right? So as you can see here, it's step-by-step -step screenshots. Um, again, this is a very powerful way of really learning more about some of these advanced features. So this is powering on, so order devices. I hear this all the time, right? So again, you can search for that and it shows you, change the order in which devices turn on. Again, it is all here. We work hard to really give you these steps. And you can do all kinds of cool advanced programming. You can add channel commands if you want to, if it's not a favorite, or additional commands or delays or reorder the devices. Um, so I can't stress that enough. I think that's a great feature that um, can really help you guys. And we're constantly evolving this site, um, putting tips and tricks on there as well. So it's not just support, it also talks about the experience. You can type in Lutron and we show how we work with Lutron or with Roku. Um, so I gotta run through this because I also wanna show you uh, all the demo. Again, seeing is believing. Um, I'm gonna try to also cast my phone. I'm gonna switch the camera here. Let's see here. Um, can, um, is my screen still on, Mike, just to confirm? Yep. Okay, perfect. Just bear with me here. Let's see if we can get this up and running. If 
No, we'll just leave that out. And it looks like the airplane may not be working. I'm gonna give it one more shot. No. Okay, we're gonna leave the airplay out, but that's that's quite all right. The most important thing is that everyone can see what's happening here on the background. So what we have here is a, a small little setup so I can um, give you guys a little bit of a demo on the Harmony Pro. So we have the Harmony Pro here. You can see I have it set up with the Home Hub extender. Just very briefly, um, you can see it is attached. It's just magnetic. It just really clicks on very easily and it just loops the power. So it almost looks like it actually um, was one piece. So we have the Home um, Hub extender with the Harmony Pro here. Um, you can see I have a Sonos. I have Lutron lights here. I have a Zigbee lights. So you'll see the Zigbee lights behave a little different when you turn them off than Z-Wave. Z-Wave has a cinematic dim. A Zigbee uh, just turns off quickly. Uh, I've got some Lutron blinds. I have a Sony TV here with a Roku. So uh, let's get this started. So the first thing, um, what I want to demo um, is with the Harmony, you can set up some great activities. Of course, we already mentioned um, the fact that you can control things uh, remotely. But what I want to actually talk about is the fact that Harmony can be a great alarm. So you can actually have activities trigger um, on their own. So of course, um, the Harmony can you know, turn on an activity as an alarm, but you can actually also create a good morning ritual. So I have here an activity called good morning. So I can actually have the Harmony automatically turn that on um, at 6 a.m. So I'm gonna just start the good morning activity as an example. So when I start my good morning routine, maybe this customer, when he starts their day, they wanna wake up with the fan running, they want the lights on, they want the blinds on um, to really start their day. So this is one way of really um, showing, you know, some of the benefits um, that you can do with Harmony as an alarm. But again, you can also have it, of course, um, turning on your TV, you can actually have it automatically um, switch um, to um, maybe a Roku activity. You can have it launch an app. So it really gives you um, a lot of different ways of waking up with your good morning routine. And this can be triggered um, as an alarm. Um, you can do different combinations. Again, you know, some of these smart products have an alarm. But again, if I want to do that, I can only turn on my Sonos with that alarm. It's just music only my lights. With the Harmony, you can really create a scene by turning on your TV and start a weather channel or ESPN or the news, turning on the lights, turning on the sono. So that's just a great way of building these experiences for your customer. Now, if you want to learn more about that, I will be kicking off um, another webinar in a couple of, uh, probably um, in September. Um, after CDI where I will give some webinar sessions on how to set up some of these uh, routines which are actually very easy to set up. So this is just one example. Again, what I want to mention, because the app, of course, is cloud-based, the customer may storm out of their house, have their TV on, their fan, and so forth. Um, you know, they could be watching the news. You know, I'm just going to show you, for instance, here we'll talk about Roku, right? Those activities where you know, you can start things like Sling TV automatically, the fan is running. Now, because, you know, the remote is not going to go to work with the customer, but the phone, of course, goes with the customer. So they may be at work and realize, oh, I left my thermostat on, you know, and I left my lights on and my blinds are open. Now, the great thing is you can create a, a way activity for your customer. And that will program the lights to come off, you know, turn off, the fan to turn off, the blinds to go down. And of course, the Harmony understands which AV activity is running. So you can see here, I started the Sling TV. Now in my um, away um, routine, I did not include a specific activity. What I've done is, I've ensured that the Harmony understands to turn off the AV device. So any AV activity, maybe you watch movie, will be shut down with that activity. 
So that's a great example where you give your customer this full control with a push of a button, I can shut down my whole house. Now we're talking about you know the misfit, how you can do a welcome home. You can actually also do that, of course, from your phone. Maybe your customer um, is not really into fitness wearables, but with their phone, you know, they can easily start an activity before they enter their house. They can start welcome home right from their phone, and now it turns on the lights, turns on the fan, it opens the blinds, it starts playing some, you know, lounge music on the Sonos. Maybe no one is home, but it sure is a very open welcome to come back to your house. So as you can see here, um, I may have triggered that on my phone, but the beauty is everything is on the hub. The hub is the brain. So you can see, I can actually uh, have access to my Sonos on my phone or on my Pro remote. You can see I can, of course, um, we talked about, I showed some benefits, of course, of the phone because when I'm out of home. But when I'm controlling my music, I don't want to be glued to my phone. I want to just hold the remote and having the ability to change the volume, mute it, and still have eye contact with my guest. That's a very powerful experience, right? So that's the benefit of really having a physical remote. So this is a great way of controlling your Sonos. You can actually see um, the now playlist. Um, you can have the commands, but of course the favorite channels. So if you want to change it up, you can change the station. And of course, as you're changing the station, um, it also changes on the phone. So again, this is a great way, you know, you can fill it with your phone or with your probe. Right from the remote, you have access to pause, play, if you want to quickly mute it. And then the beauty is, of course, because it's not a phone, I can actually control it without having to look. I know where the volume button is. I know where the play button is. So those are some great examples of really, you know, getting the most out of your Sono system. So, and because the Harmony understands these states, we created these activities where we can very easily switch. So if I want to watch TV, the Harmony, of course, understands I need to, you know, turn off the Sonos, turn on the TV, for instance, and so forth. Um, and what I deliberately did, I manually turned on the TV, but what I wanted to create this scenario um, with what we're talking about is what if things kind of run out of sync, right? So if I press the help button, you can see it automatically turns on the TV. Now what I want to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. I want to just create a scenario where um, maybe a child, you know, got a hold of the buttons on the side of the screen. Maybe they decided to mess with the inputs. Maybe the power goes out. So now, of course, you know, it's on the wrong source. I can actually made the scenario a little bit better. It's just confusing with this input. So it's on an input that nothing is connected, right? Um, it's not on the right source. Now you turn the TV on, it's out of sync. Now the customer can hit the little gear wrench right here. And now if they hit help, we actually automatically fire any discrete command. So if it has discrete commands, we will send power and we'll power it on. If it's already on, we automatically send the input. Now, of course, maybe the TV wasn't, the TV wasn't powered on. So again, this is a very easy way of switching it, but it was um, not on the right input. I can actually answer the question with, did it fix the problem? I'm gonna say, no, is the Sony TV on? Yes, it is. Is it on the right HDMI input? No. So when you say no, it fixes it. So that's a very powerful way of synchronizing the state. If a child played with it or the power goes off, um, it's a great way without you having to make a house call. And that's available on the remote, but on the app as well. So these are just some of the benefits. The other benefit that I want to point out, I know we're quickly running out of time, is the fact that these home control buttons are very powerful because now again we talked about it I can actually hold the um, button and it will turn off a specific light and then if I give it a quick press it turns that on so I created a light group where it only turns on or off those specific lights so that's a great way of you know controlling the lights I can also turn off the fan if I you know hold the button it turns off the fan or you can say, maybe I want to turn off all my lights. So again, this is a very easy, powerful way for customers to control their home control. So those are some of the demos. I do want to show um, the API as promised as well. 
So this is another example where um, there's a different way of controlling it. Let's. I apologize, someone went off mute. There we go. A second. Um, if you can go ahead on mute, that would be great. Um, my apologies, I'm trying to... Oh, yeah, that's right. There we go. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Coming back here. So um, I'm going to show the um, APR. So let me just kind of create an example where I think this is very powerful. So. Um, as I've mentioned, um, we um, actually um, have a Harmony API in the Sony TV. So for instance, if I go to Smart TV activity, I can, of course, it will automatically transition to the Smart TV. And I can very easily switch back to the Slim TV. So again, this is another easy way to control your Smart TV while watching TV, right? All I'm doing is switching from Slim TV back to Smart TV. And I'm actually controlling my smart TV without it turning off my cable box and so forth. So another example here is we actually have an Harmony app. As you can see here in the apps, um, I have the shortcuts to my activities. Or if I want to control all my activities, I can launch the Harmony app that's currently in beta for um, Sony TVs. Again, this is available right now on the Google Play Store. And I can actually start, maybe I want to start my good night activity right now. Um, but I think a very powerful experience, of course, this is a great feature where maybe this particular customer um, has a companion or um, somehow um, has one room where he has a companion and it's not the main room where they may have the Harmony Pro. Because, of course, you do not have all the smart control statuses and features on the remote. You can only control. Um, your favorite lights, which is after uh, four you've run out. So maybe you want to control all the lights or a specific group that enables you to do so. But I think another very powerful experience is even with the Pro, you know, um, you could be watching, you know, your favorite game. And as you're watching your favorite game, you know, you don't want to look even at your remote. You don't want to miss a moment of the game. But in the meantime, the blinds are bothering you. So what you can do is you can actually bring up the Sony Discovery, and right from the Discovery, you can see here that we have these favorite um, Sony um, shortcuts. In this case, these are the shortcuts for my Harmony activity. So as I'm watching the game, I can very easily close the blinds. So now the Harmony is being controlled through the Sony. So the Sony talks to our API, telling the Harmony to tell the Lutron, to close the blinds. So these are great examples where we're really trying to expand on different ways um, of controlling your system. So uh, moving forward, again, uh, we have a lot to demo. I want to just briefly mention uh, as well, um, we talked about you know simplified um, setup. Um, again, the lights I also have on the app. I have the blinds on the app as well. If I bring up the blinds here, I can actually, you know, control them right from here as well. Um, I have my light groups, my thermostat, it's all accessible. Uh, very quickly, um, we support up to four mobile devices to one hub at a time. I mean, more people can install it, but four people can connect to it at the same time. So that almost gives the whole family access um, to control their devices. So just as I mentioned how you can, you know, wake up to Harmony, um, you know, have Harmony welcome you home. You can also start a good night activity. So I'm just going to demo this. Now the good night activity again, you can create a specific scene. So you can actually start that. Now when you start good night activity, it knows to turn off the TV, to, you know, lower the blinds, put on the light in the bedroom, maybe play some calming, um, sleepy music um, on the Sonos. And then the great feature is, of course, you know, your remote, of course, is downstairs. This is where the app might be a nice option because the phone you carry may be upstairs. And as you have your phone right here, you can actually hit the little menu, 
start the sleep timer, set it for 15 minutes, and now the harmony will count down and it will automatically turn off your sonos and will turn off your lights, lower the thermostat, maybe turn off the blinds, make sure that the blinds are closed. So that's a very powerful way to do that. And of course, that feature is also available right on the Elite. So um, moving forward, because we're really almost out of time, I wanna quickly um, share with you um, this feature that we're working on and uh, you can leave feedback in uh, the chat or in this case you can actually unmute yourself because we've done all the demos um, should you want to comment on uh, this a quick setup okay yeah we can uh, if, uh, if it allows me to uh, to share let me uh, do you want to make sure we do that okay so uh, very quickly um, I'm just gonna show um, the slide deck here so I'm very excited to share the UX that we have in place right now. So the first phase for multi-zone is really creating dynamic multi-zone. And that's a strong use case. What that means is the customer is not always um, adding the sound from the TV living room to a secondary zone that may be in the pad on the patio or on the kitchen, right? This is kind of more... Um, when they kind of feel like it. Maybe they have a, a, a house party, maybe a dinner party, or maybe they have, you know, they enjoy um, watching the game when they invite some friends. So what happens is, um, right now it's very complex because you need to create kind of two activities, you know, watch TV and then another one with the zone to include it. Well, really what we want to do, and I'm going to actually skip to this first, what we want to do is have this feature for you where the customer now can on the fly enable an additional zone. So when they're in the Roku activity, maybe they're streaming something, um, maybe it's Sling TV, maybe it's um, a movie or whatever, they can actually now enable another zone. And when they enable the zone, the Harmony will automatically power on that secondary zone and set it to the correct source. So we want to make it really a one-touch experience. Now, when they're done listening to that secondary zone, they uncheck it, and then the Harmony will automatically turn off that secondary zone. So this is really the first implementation, and this is where we feel that we can really simplify the actual multi-zone experience for one of the most common use cases uh, for using the multi-zone. Of course, what we're going to do right now, it's hard to add the multi-zone. Um, there's a couple drawbacks. We are counting each zone as an individual device. Um, that's something we're going to remove, so that way you can add more devices. Um, it's very complex to actually add the model for the secondary zone. So we want to move to a very unified experience where you really just add the AVR and you select your zones. And of course, um, naming the zones as well. So this is part of the setup, but again, uh, we want to make sure that that feature is on the mobile phone and of course on the Harmony uh, Pro as well. So this is a great example. Any feedback suggestions, um, always welcome. Again, we might uh, send out a separate survey uh, asking more questions on how you use your multi-zone, uh, what you would like to see, the common use cases and so forth. So um, before I go into uh, setup, um, is there, are there any other questions, uh, Mike, that... No, I'm pretty much having them all. Excellent. Just a couple people who said they want to make sure. Okay, so I need to, I'm going to shut, I'm going to quickly stop sharing my screen because right now the um, plan B would be doing AirPlay on the Apple uh, TV, but I'd much rather do it on this screen. Um, I'm going to try to restart the screen sharing. Turn off that camera. While everyone is waiting, um, maybe whoever requested it, or anyone else for that matter, um, as I'm trying to get um, my AirPlay to run on my computer, 
um, specific options of setup that they want to cover, adding home control, setting up a Sonos activity, um, any specific uh, scenarios or use cases. I'm going to reboot my phone here, hope for the best. I do apologize for the delay. So by um, AirPlay is not available um, through Apple on my laptop. There are third party applications. They usually work, um, but if there's a lot of uh, Wi-Fi interference, um, it can sometimes allow you not to uh, launch it from your phone. Um, just doing a quick reboot on my phone. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna present it um, on the actual Apple TV. So just bear with me. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, but um, again, uh, yeah, the other thing is um, I will have a specific webinar scheduled. Again, we'll do another email blast for people that are really interested in um, wanting to see the programming capabilities, and that webinar will be specifically focused on how to program these activities um, and how to add some of these uh, additional uh, programming features. Trying this. Oh, I might have a secondary iPhone that might do the job. I'm starting to wonder if it's uh, something on my phone. I don't know what you mean by something. <laughs> That was some Siri humor. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, we have a screen. Let me start sharing my screen. Again, I, I do apologize for this delay. Um, and this is again a third party app to share this, but I uh, do think it will help. Um, I'm sharing my screen now. I'm just gonna get confirmation um, from Mike here to make sure. Okay, we can see my phone. Excellent. All right. So I just had to reboot um, my phone. So what we see here is my um, Harmony app that I have here. So this is the control app, of course. So what we're gonna show here is how to um, do some programming. So were there specific examples, Mike, or do you want me to just we're do not one from scratch? Setup. We want to scratch set up a TV table box and a Roku. Okay, so this device is already configured. What I'm gonna do is, so the devices are already there, but what I can do here is um, let's set up an actual activity, even though the devices are in the account, I'm just going to show how to how easy it is to set up um, an activity with these uh, devices. So just to recap, so what you see here, this is not a new user setup. Again, I will do a full end-to-end -end setup on a specific webinar, um, so we can really go into that. But let me just give you a, a quick glance on um, how you program an activity that maybe concludes some AV devices and entertainment devices. So you can see I have all my activities right here that I've created. Well, let's create a new activity. So I'm gonna click on add activity. So um, there are some activities that it already recommends, but in this case, I'm just gonna create my own manual activity. And I'm gonna also quickly turn on this fan so I'm gonna get a little bit of air going in this room. So um, let's just call it, because we haven't decided what we're gonna do is, um, let's create a you know, Roku app activity and we'll just leave it to what app we decide. So let's create a custom Roku activity with lighting and home control. So uh, I just gave it a name. Again, this can be completely customizable. Um, we have a ton of um, icons. I'm just gonna quickly select one. I'm gonna move on to now uh, selecting my devices. I'm gonna select my TV. I'm gonna select my Roku. Um, 
and I'm going to select um, some of my lights. I can include the fan in the hallway. So as you can see here, I've selected my AV devices and my uh, home control devices as well. So now it's making sure that uh, the Sony TV is powered on. So that's the great thing. As you're setting it up, it's also allowing to make sure that the device is powered on. Um, it's switched to the right source, uh, et cetera. So it's confirming that. Um, and it already understands uh, that in the past I've used HDMI 1 for my Roku, so that helps. Um, again, if it's not the right input, I can select the TV. I have my inputs right here, including Netflix as well. Um, so once I've selected my input, <coughs> I can now confirm that the hub can control it. And this is where I adjust my home control devices. So I'm gonna say, for instance, I'm gonna select my bedroom light. I can, uh, of course, I wanna turn it on. And then I can say the light intensity, so maybe I want it at 70%. There's also a very easy feature where you can say apply to all lights. So now when I go back, it has applied that to my different lighting, even though one is Z-Wave and one is Lutron, it's completely irrelevant. Of course, the fan is a separate plug. So I'm gonna go to the fan and maybe I wanna make sure that when I start this activity, I don't hear the loud fan in the background. So it turns it off. As I'm setting this off, uh, setting this up, it's also giving that feedback because the fan behind me is now turning off. Now, another great feature of that is you can actually say, well, it's great to have lights in my activity, but maybe when my uh, three-year-old son turns on Netflix at 7 a.m. for morning cartoons, I only want it to turn on Netflix and not the lights. So you can actually say, I only want to apply this after sunset or maybe um, only during the day. So I'm just going to leave it in this case to always. Now, what I want to talk about is um, you can start an activity and leave end an activity. So a good example is with a watch movie type of activity, you may want to dim the lights when you start it. But when you end the activity, you want all the lights to turn on bright so you can find your way back to the kitchen or the living room. So this is a great example where you can have a start action to an activity with your home control and an end action as well. So now it turns on the lights bright when I actually leave this activity or hit the off button. So now we've configured our home control devices. Again, you could also put in a thermostat you can add your blinds in there as well. You can say close it or open it. Again, this is a very easy way of adding these devices. You don't have to write scripts and templates and stuff. We're talking here, uh, you know, a matter of a few minutes of really, you know, customizing these activities and really getting the most out of that experience. And what it's doing now is it's making sure that it saves all the settings right on our cloud. So if the customer ever has uh, their remote destroyed by their dog, they can of course uh, replace the remote and you can actually recover it if you purchase the same remote with that same configuration. If it's a different remote, you can import the settings. So we're gonna say we're gonna test this later. So now we've done this, we've created our activity, but because it's a Roku, you can actually launch a favorite channel. So any activity that we support favorites for, so your TV with Dish or your Sonos activities or Roku, you can actually say, well, this Roku activity, I wanted to launch one of my favorite Rokus. Um, so maybe I want an HBO Now activity or a Plex activity. So you can create these great additional activities. And this is where there's a huge opportunity for you to say, well, I can set up you know, a harmony with your, you know, watch movie, watch TV, or with the bigger install package, I can add all these extra activities for you. So you can actually really upsell your customer on doing some advanced programming that really doesn't require a lot of time. Um, and all the time you save with setup, you can really, really um, enhance the overall experience for your customer and actually charge a little more for the setup. So it's a great example of really getting the most um, out of the product and providing the best service for your customers. So now, you know, really in a matter of minutes, we've created a new activity that automatically not only, you know, starts the Roku, let's, I think we call this activity, we have a lot of Roku app. So that's just in summary here. This is the activity summary. If I actually want to see what happens or modify the start sequence, I can actually click on that right there and you can see it's turning on the Sonos, uh, Sony, 
the Roku is always on, it's setting the input, it's setting the lights, and so forth. And if you want to make these modifications, you have access to your home control right there. You can add or remove devices, or maybe you want to add a start action to your TV. So again, these advanced features are right there. Maybe I want to add a little device, a command to the Sony um, that it will send um, a movie command for the aspect ratio um, and so forth. So you can do a lot of great features in a very short time. So this really sums up how to really build your own activity with AV and home control devices. Very quickly, I want to mention you can, of course, also create a specific activity for just home control. It doesn't need to be just uh, a combination. You can also do something with just lights or, and so forth. Right. So suggest that rounds show, it up. Oh, this activity? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Show a uh, demo of the activity? Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. So let me just switch the camera. That's what you have to do no. Yeah, so again, the, what, what we're actually seeing, let me hopefully I can actually, let me quickly turn on my camera before it's done. Um, right now, the Harmony Pro is syncing the changes that I just applied on the phone. Again, the brain is on the hub, right? The hub controls everything. Um, and the phone and the um, Pro remote communicate to the hub. Therefore, everything is stored there and that pushes it to the cloud. So that really gives you that very unified experience. So you don't have to program something in you know, point A, point B. No, you program it on the desktop or on your phone. And from that point, it synchronizes that activity right here on the screen. I'm gonna see if I can actually start the other camera. Okay, beautiful. Okay, excellent. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna start the activity here. I'm sure gonna move to this camera. So we had this activity um, Roku app. Let me just turn off the lights. Let me switch it to another input. Get the full demo out of there. Okay, we got that. I'll we'll turn that off as well. Okay, so now we're on like an Apple TV activity. So let's navigate to the activity that we created. As you can see, the Roku app activity is right on the remote. You can see that currently it's on the Apple TV activity, which you can see on um, the app and on the, the remote. But I'm gonna actually trigger this from the remote. You'll see that the app is also gonna, of course, switch. I'm gonna start the Roku app activity, which is HBO that we just created. You can see on the phone it also shows that it's you know starting the Roku app. It switches to HDMI one and also goes to HDMI HBO and switches on the lights. And of course, the first time it confirms that the activity is running correct, I'm going to say yes. So again, there you have it. In a matter of um, minutes, I've now created a full-blown HBO activity with my lighting, setting up everything, and they're again they're accessible on both remote and phone. So that really concludes um, the little quick setup again. Um, I'm excited to really have a specific webinar on that and then we can really go into um, you know, a start to end of how to set up these Harmony activities. Yes, let me uh, confirm. I got that one. Let me just stop my screen. Yeah, I want to just reconfirm. Yep, yeah, it worked. Okay. Uh, the dealer hotline is um, 866-826-5722. We'll just repeat once more. Um, you want to actually put it in the chat? The chat to all. We'll put it in the chat right now. Um, any last questions? Feel free to put it in the chat right now or um, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Why have you guys chosen to do a 2.5 millimeter jack instead of 3.5? I ask myself that question every day. Um, 
It's a very good question. We did 3.5 way back in the day, right, on the uh, 890. Um, it was a cost-saving decision way back uh, before we decided to return back to the studio channel. So the hub has come a long way in the last couple of years. Unfortunately, that was, uh, that was a decision that was made. Um, I don't think that would be uh, the case in any future designs. I will fight hard for this. Um, and as well, this comes to, um, you know, should we ever design, redesign another product um, I really want to start creating a group of installers that we can send surveys to. And these are not surveys to like how to market things. Now these are surveys where we want to have that type of feedback. That we can start, you know, working with our product owners and product managers and say, okay, well, this is really what the market needs. This is what the installers are asking for. That being said, um, as much as 3.5 is great, the real solution is slowly starting to migrate devices to IP control. Uh, that's something we have pinned on the roadmap for next year. We really need to expand on that. And that will really um, resolve that part of uh, that, that pain point when we're starting to you know, want to control multiple devices. That being said, you can buy you know a little 2.5 to 3.5 adapter. They're available for a couple bucks. So that uh, maybe most of them have worked. I've, I've set some up myself. But great, great question. Good feedback. I have a second question, follow up. Okay. Based on the fact that you guys have this pro and you're really trying to, uh, uh, I guess, compete in the Cedia type channel for with the custom integrators. Do you think this device is going to grow, meaning is it going to have additional inputs where, you know, for instance, right now, if we have a TV that we need to get IR to, uh, we have to take one of the jacks and, and, just, and it can only control one IR. And then we, we, in the past, we've been using the mini blaster and the regular blaster. So I know that this new product, because I've already installed about five of them in the last two weeks, uh, comes with eight emitters, but yeah. I don't know, I haven't asked my techs yet how hard it is to cut one of the emitters off so that we don't lose the other emitters when we have to have one of them remotely running to another part of the room. Yeah, so you, you want to cut them off instead of taping them off so it doesn't accidentally blast through a device where it's not supposed to. So they can be spliced, so you can actually, like if I have these, they're tight, right? But I can actually do this all the way to... No, so my... my Right. My point is, is we have a TV that is on the wall and the equipment's over in the closet and I, and I need to run it over Cat5. So that works. I've done 100 feet Cat5 for my dad's setup with a Harmony. Right. But my point is that when you do that, you take one of your two jacks, yes. has to run one device and you just yeah, lost you three other you emitters. Think about splicing that, um, we've looked into that. Um, I haven't had success, um, but I want to I wanna reinvestigate that. I know exactly what you're saying. Can we splice that port and will it still emit? So what I would like you to do is in the chats, uh, I'm going to put in my email and send me an email and uh, I will put this on, on as an action item to see if we can further investigate that. So it's pshouten at logitech.com. Um, make sure I want to send it to you all. Okay, there's my email. Um, yeah, great feedback. Um, to be confirmed. Um, I, I see what you're saying there. You want to use that one jack, but then what about the rest of the jacks? Uh, because now you're, you're surrendering one of the two ports only to the TV. The other option I want to mention, but there is a drawback on that. First of all, this. It's not an IR um, blaster. It's not, um, it doesn't send IR. This is an IR learning port. We do have IR on here. But there is an ability where you can do the hub on all the AV stack, and this will just control the TV. The drawback on that, and that's why for most setups I don't recommend it, is that now the mobile app cannot turn on the TV anymore. So it does come um, with a drawback. But well, that could be perhaps an alternative. I just want to make sure that people are aware that you can do that. Again, a lot of these programming capabilities can be done on the remote. So you can actually go to settings and you can assign that port on the remote as well. So, excellent. Great question. Um, 
More questions? You're more than welcome. Again, I really appreciate uh, the attendance, uh, everyone's feedback. Um, it's great. This is how we can really, you know, grow and work on uh, the product and the speakers. I have one last question. Yeah. Um, have the elite remote control. And what's the difference between the elite and the pro besides the emitters and the color and the packaging? That's it's a reskinned elite. I'm gonna be honest with you, right? It's a reskinned elite. So two years warranty. It's not a product that you can technically compare. So if they see a picture with a different price point, you can press on the points that it's two years warranty. It comes with um, the IR precision kit. Um, so those, those are definitely differences that does make the a product uh, a little different compared to the. Other than that, it's the same yeah. thing pretty much. Sorry? Other than that, it's the same. The, uh, the features same is the same, um, but it's yeah. only available on the Pro Channel. You can't find this on a Best Buy or an Amazon.com. Got it. Yep. Or Logispec.com. Um, so I can't stress that enough. Feature wise, are we going to block off multi zone? That's still up for debate. I don't think that's a real importance. What we're, the reason why we're doing multi-zone is not for the retail consumers. They're not even going to bother with that. Maybe, you know, the really top 5% DIYs, well, they can play with that. But it's a feature that we're putting on a roadmap for CDR for the customer's dollar channel. And it's not just going to be multi-zone. Of course, multi-zone, we need to look at IP control. We need to have uh, a new version of the dealer um, dashboard. <clears throat> Again, we have to prioritize these things. And we want your feedback and we need to look at what can we do and when can we do it and how to prioritize. And that's why um, the surveys that we'll be sending are so important to really get the feedback on them. So, great Fantastic. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. One last comment, Pike. I, can you raise the price to 449 and then lower our cost by $25? So we can make a little more margin, but then it really differentiates us from the elite because we're charging hundred dollars more and you're getting eight emitters, which is easily easy to justify uh, the extra hundred dollars versus fifty dollars and an extent an extra year warranty. To me, it's a no brainer. I actually mark your I've been selling your elite for four forty nine to my customers for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And I've never once had a customer complain about it. But you for four forty nine you can't buy a URC, a control four or anything else. So you're still even at that price point, you're you're hundred and fifty dollars less than probably anything else out on the market and you do all the programming for us. I wish you guys would have come out and told CE Pro and all these people it's 449 not 399 so we could make a little more margin. So, That's probably the number one complaint I think in our channel is that your remotes don't give us enough margin. So I'm going to jump in here this is Mike Sajeki. Uh, the note that the price point is based on a even though this is not a retail product but it's raised based on a retail transaction meaning you hand the box to the customer. We know that no integrator would ever do that. But that's the way the price is based. Fortunately, dealers in various parts of the country will charge different hourly programming rates. So the intention is that the retail price point of $399 is designed based on your payment. Right? And then you charging your customer based on the level of integration in which that you're going to do. If you're setting programming a television, a cable box, and a strand sound receiver, that's drastically different than a multi device, Z Wave, Roku, two way standards, or something. So I suggest that you either keep your 449 and maybe even raise it to 599 with some sort of a checklist based on the amount of devices you're programming. And we have dealers that are telling us that they're getting as much as $700 per remote installation on the pro based on doing a very, very expensive setting up programming. The reason that it's fast and easy to set up, that's only more profit for you. Yeah, got it. That's that's a yeah. good point. Yeah, if we if we kept our install. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Labor price the same. Yours, yours would, yours would take half the time to program than anything else. That's right, and that, that's what we strive for, right? I'm very passionate about data. I'm a technical trainer, but I've been working for Harmony for ten years. I started taking calls to the dealer hotline, but what I really do is I go quarterly to the Best Buy, work on every device before customers enter the store, every smart TV. I do the same thing in Europe. Um, and I love what I do because this is what helps our foundation, the database is the gold, right? You can make great remotes, but if your database ain't smart, 
then you guys will start juggling with configurations. Where I want you to tell the customer, okay, I can install this pro, uh, product with your watch TV or watch movie, get this, you know, the basics, or you want a good morning, a welcome home, a dinner time, right? I don't even know this, but you know, this is, you want to you want wow the wife? Well, guess what? You know, it's with dinner time. Push at the button, it's already going to be impressed. It's going to turn off. It's going to lower the blinds a bit. It's going to like start playing some dinner time music. You know, one button, she's already impressed, right? That's what we need to aim for. We need to start looking at how can I add these services for my customer? And that's what you can do with Harmony. You know, there, and there's going to be some exciting announcements further down where we can do different integrations. You know, you see this API, you see this Bestoni, it's going to come a long way. We're going to do different integrations where you can wow your customer. And that should not be a basic installation package. That should be, the, you know, the plus package, right? Um, one quick thing, and I uh, keep the questions coming, you know, I'm in no rush to end this session. Um, you feel free when to leave, but the questions are great. This, I feel, could be a great add-on to the CDR. We don't sell this separately, but my question is, um, and you can leave that in the comments, is this something that would be a benefit to your customer? Because what I want to mention is, and some of you are not aware of this, this companion could technically be added to the hub. Now, what I'm talking about is I can actually control one hub with my Elite, or Harmony, like my pro, and my companion. And what that allows me is I can have this on the kitchen counter, or I can have my three-year-old operate it without giving the fancy remote. But we still haven't decided to make this a separate accessory, but it'll be great to hear from you and what you guys think of, is this something you could sell, and what kind of price point um, would you think we would need to sell this to you? Because we need to look at it. Like, we're thinking at $49 to make this an add-on. So this is something, if you're going to justify this, we need to make sure that um, this is something that you could use in the field, giving your customer that additional companion remote to be uh, the same hub. So something I wanted to briefly share with you. Great. So again, this is, um, don't, doesn't need to be answered now. I think this will be in a separate survey where we can hear feedback, what your thoughts are. It's just another example. We're trying to think other solutions, different control factors of, of you know, how to enable that. So, uh, any other questions? No? Okay, I think we're, we're good. Like I said, um, this was a great webinar. Really appreciated the feedback. This is a good conversation. Um, again, um, we'll be sending out surveys for the people that opt in. Um, the next webinar, I will start putting on the agenda. Programming. I want to thank you for your time. You, uh, yourself a great weekend and um maybe we'll see you next week. Take care.